Welcome to Fear Free Childbirth Podcast with Alexia Leachman, the weekly nine-month podcast to help parents-to-be look forward to their fear-free childbirth. Alexia is a pregnancy and head trash clearance coach and the author of Fear Free Childbirth, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy and a Positive Pain-Free Birth. As a mum who's had two fear-free and pain-free births, Alexia wants to share with you how she overcame her pregnancy and childbirth fears so that you can look forward to having a fear-free birth too. Over the nine-month life of this podcast, Alexia will be sharing some real-life stories from mums and dads, insights into the latest childbirth research, inspiring tales from birth professionals, and some tips and techniques for clearing your fears and stresses. If you would like to receive a free chapter from her book, then head over to fearfreechildbirth.com, where you can also sign up for her email series, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy. But now, it's time for the show. Hello and welcome back to the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. This is me, your host, Alexi Leach, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, on today's podcast, I want to share with you a little exercise that I think can help you to shift your thinking and think a little bit more positively about something that you might currently be thinking negatively about. And this is an exercise that I shared on my Head Trash Show podcast. So if you haven't heard my Head Trash Show podcast, then you might want to check it out. And the Head Trash Show podcast is basically to help you to get rid of your head trash. And head of trash, in my way of talking about it, is basically those negative thoughts, feelings and emotions that stop you from feeling and being your best. So fears, anxieties, stresses, all that stuff falls under the head trash banner as far as I'm concerned. And so that podcast is all about helping you to really get rid of all that stuff and live a happier life. So, you know, feel free to check that out. However, there's one exercise that I really used quite a bit when I was pregnant. And I want to share that with you today because it might be helpful for you too. So when I was coming to the end of my pregnancy, I was getting really, really stressed out just by being pregnant, or at least being kind of frustrated at this state that I was in, you know, feeling big, not getting any sleep, all this kind of stuff. And I really didn't want to be wallowing in those kind of thoughts because I knew that that just wasn't going to help me or my baby. I really needed to shift my thinking. And so, you know, one thing that you hear about a lot is, you know, if you can move to a place of gratitude and be grateful for things that you have in your life, then immediately that shift in perspective can really help to make a difference. And so it kind of borrows a bit from that, if I'm perfectly honest. But essentially, the exercise is this. If you're experiencing something that you really are beginning to hate to some degree, maybe you just don't like it, it's not as strong as hate, but it's certainly in the negative side of things, then a good thing to do is come up with 30 reasons why this bad thing is good. So this exercise is really just to start helping you to be grateful for the negative thing that might be happening to you. And it might not be negative per se. It might just be that you're perceiving it as a negative experience. But actually, if you just think about it slightly differently, it might not be that negative. So how did I use that in my pregnancy? So I I was coming up to the end of my pregnancy. I might have been in the last month or so or the last six weeks of my pregnancy. And really just I was done. I'm like, I'm ready to have this baby come on already. I just I can't I can't do this anymore. Come on, let's 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 get it, get it over and done with. But, you know, you can't. You've just got to sit tight and wait. You've just got to sit tight and wait. There's nothing you can do about it. So I thought the best thing for me to do is really just to start thinking differently about my pregnancy. So what I did is I came up with 30 reasons why I love being pregnant and just really focused on building this list and just having fun with it. Now, coming up with 30 reasons to do something or 30 reasons to like something, you know, that's quite a long list. And so the likelihood is that you're going to run out of ideas near about the 10 mark. But the great thing about doing this kind of exercise is that it starts forcing you to get a little bit creative. It starts forcing you to think in new ways. And that's the magic in doing this exercise. You can start creating new sort of paths of thinking, new perspectives. And because you've got to be a little bit silly, you've got to kind of let go of some assumptions. And so in doing that, you can already start to change your thinking. Now, 
I thought that it would be really interesting for me to share what my reasons were, you know, why I loved being pregnant, because maybe some of these reasons might help you to shift your thinking as well. And you never know, you might just want to add to this list and we can get this whole big thing, this list going, right? So here are my 30 reasons why I loved being pregnant. So reason number one, enjoying the daily awe-inspiring feeling that comes from knowing that you're growing a life form inside you. You know, when you just take a moment to stop and think about that, it's pretty mind-blowing what's going on. So I would just invite you to just, you know, stop for a moment and do that because that really does make you appreciate what you're doing, you know. Number two, appreciate other women who feel an immediate connection to you and come over and make conversation and then enjoy those conversations as the precious moments that they are. You know, I noticed so many women that would just come up to me and strike up a conversation purely because I was a pregnant mama. That was the only reason they came over to talk to me. And my goodness, what lovely conversations I had as a result of those people that just came over to me and talked to me. And you just don't get that if you're not pregnant. You just don't get that. So I really started to appreciate those conversations and and take a moment to pause and actively try and prolong them rather than thinking, get away, you crazy woman. What are you doing? Talk to me. I don't know you, you know, really kind of shifted how I approach those. Then number three, I had the perfect excuse to slum about in slip on flats baggy tops and leggings. You know, yes, I know some women love to be all glamorous and gorgeous and all that stuff, but I really didn't feel like that second time round. And the idea of just being, it's okay to just wear slip on flat shoes, baggy tops and leggings was just perfect. It, you know, took a whole lot of decision making out of my head for a good few months. So I could just slob about, which was great because I don't normally like to do that, or at least I don't sort of enjoy it to the degree that I did when I was pregnant. Number four, amuse at other people touching your body or your bump without invitation, and yet enjoy the fact that it's not a sexual or a pervy thing for once. You know, the idea that people were coming over and touching my bump, I, I'm amazed at how many people do that, and I, that used to really, really annoy me. But I I just wanted to make peace with that because, you know, they're only doing it for the best intentions and they're not doing it to freak me out. They're just they want to connect again. It's this, this need to connect. And so I just kind of started to enjoy it from a place of curiosity. And that really, really helped me to to turn that kind of perspective around. Number five, have the perfect excuse to eat what you want in the quantity that you want. Now, I know some people do like to cut out certain stuff during their pregnancy. And there's lots of advice about the kind of foods that you shouldn't, shouldn't eat. And to be honest, I ignored all of it because I don't like living a life of deprivation. Life is too short to deprive yourself of stuff, right? The only things that I cut out from my diet was mussels and pate because in my head they were they were things that really I did need to avoid. But everything else, you know, I had blue steaks, runny eggs. I just went for it, sushi, all that stuff. And I enjoyed it. And, and, and I really food's important to me so I chose to do that and that was my choice and I'm not certainly advising you to do that if that's not what you want to do but for me it was really nice to be able to eat a quantity of food that I just felt oh I'm just going to indulge and actually my baby was very very hungry I had to honour the energy that she required she required a lot of energy for me when I was breastfeeding as well and so I did consume a lot of calories carrying her compared to my first little girl Um, and I just had to listen to my body that's what my body needed Sure, I've got to shed a little bit more weight than I'd like right now. But hey, that's okay. I've got a gorgeous little girl. So anyway, number six, appreciate the forced slowness in movement and the the perspective that that gives you when you're out walking, for example. You know, I'm somebody that tends to dart about, walk as quick as I can, get from A to B, no hanging about. And yet, you know, I forgot sometimes when I was pregnant that I simply cannot walk at the same speed. And so once I realised and remembered as I was walking, hey, you're pregnant, you cannot walk as fast as you normally do. Why not you just slow down and actually choose to walk slower and really take in the flowers that you come across when you're walking along the street, the trees, the smell, watching other children walking by, admiring other people's clothes or their faces or what they're doing with their hair or their jewellery or their bags or looking at cars or the nature, whatever it is, wherever you might be walking, just taking an observational perspective and, and taking it all in rather than being so focused on the destination and where you're going and really appreciating the moment and being mindful, you know, being present. 
And so that was a really useful one for me to just slow down, you know, not an easy one for me personally anyway. So number seven, indulge in developing your hermit qualities. A necessary side effect for me when you need to be within 20 yards of a toilet. So yeah, I didn't want to go too far. I didn't want to go out in case there wasn't a toilet very near. So I ended up staying in quite a lot when I'd stopped work. And and actually I got to sort of enjoy that. I didn't kind of see myself as missing out on stuff. I just wanted that security of a toilet and that was the price I was prepared to pay. So, you know, I really indulged and, and made that a, a pleasurable experience rather than feeling like I was trapped at home. Um, number eight, have an excuse for having whiskers on your legs. Now, for me, I thought that, you know, because it's really frustrating not basically being able to see the bottom half of my legs or reach them in any way. And so I felt, well, you know, as cats do, pregnant women need whiskers on their legs just to see if they can get through the gaps that they have in front of them when they're walking, for example, through car parks, that kind of thing, when you just can't squeeze through gaps that you think you can, you forget how big you are sometimes. And I got jammed in in little gaps occasionally when I was like, geez, Lex, what are you doing? You, you can't fit through there. What, 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 are you, what were you thinking? You know, um, number nine, enjoy the lack of guilt that comes from not bothering with the housework or the cleaning because it is just too difficult, tiring, painful, dangerous, whatever it is, you know, all that stuff. You just really have got to pull back when you're pregnant. You can't push yourself because your bones are more flexible you know they're more delicate I certainly felt more delicate and I just had to honour how my body was making me feel and not push in the way that I normally would push myself I just had to stop doing that and so not feel guilty by the way because I wasn't doing that as well it's just enjoying that lack of guilt and being able to do it guilt-free which was just great um, number 10 wallowing in the good feeling that comes from knowing that you're being super healthy and your body and baby loves you for it now for me when I was pregnant I really enjoyed you know being healthy my body I, I wanted me to be healthy I wanted to be healthy I was really drawn to healthy food choices I really didn't want to eat anything that was crappy that was fatty really didn't want anything like that. I just wasn't drawn to it at all. And I really appreciated that my body was guiding me to eating stuff that I knew my baby needed. And it was really interesting how my diet was changing quite a lot throughout different phases of my pregnancy. And I was kind of drawing uh, in links to what was possibly being developed within my baby. I know that during my third month, I was going mad for porridge and really oaty and kind of really heavy stuff like that and I read later that apparently porridge is really great for you know creating the brain and it's like wow isn't that mad and then fourth month I just wasn't into porridge at all I wanted to go for yogurt and fruit and it's really interesting how your body is calling in for the stuff that the baby needs you know and so really kind of enjoying that process of being connected to what my body wants me to feed it what my baby wants me to feed her, feed her as it turned out as a little girl and number 11 being curious and amazed at how you can heal yourself with natural alternatives when most drugs are off limits and how this can change your thinking forever I know my second pregnancy I got you know I got quite a lot of stuff that was happening to me that normally I would have gone to the doctor and got antibiotics or whatever it was and when I was pregnant I thought well, there's just no point I'm not going to be able to they're not they can't give me anything so I just you know googled everything and I was just hunting out lots of different things that I could use to help to heal me and I was amazed at some of the stuff that I was discovering that could help me that ended up healing stuff that I'd previously got antibiotics for in a much quicker time frame and you know once you learn that stuff you can't unlearn it and so that's why I say you know for me it changed my thinking forever and I'm really grateful for those moments of illness when I was pregnant because it's really shown me another way of healing my body in a much more healthy way that's that's better for the environment better in lots of ways so that was number 11 number 12 not getting stressed that you keep bursting out of your clothes that you get bigger you know when you're not pregnant the idea of not fitting into something just completely fills you with dread whereas when you're pregnant you're like oh well I've just got bigger that's fine you just shrug it off and it's one of the only times in life when you can kind of, for me anyway, not get stressed about those kind of things. So that was a really good one for me. Now, number 13 was for me having the perfect excuse to get out of doing the washing up because basically I just couldn't reach the tap end of, you know, if you can't reach the tap, then you can't do the washing up. So that's just brilliant, brilliant excuse. Number 14, watch and experience your body transform right in front of you as nature does its thing. 
and realise that nature is just so much more powerful than we could ever be. And I guess that's a little bit like my first one, really. But, you know, just amazed that from day to day, I just see my body change and experience that change. And it really is just awe-inspiring what, what the body goes through as you go through this, this period of growing another human being. It still blows my mind when I see my daughters running around. And I think, goodness, that was that was created in me. It still messes with my head, you know. Um, number 15. I relished parking like an idiot in the car park by taking up two car parking spaces. And that was just so that I could get in or out of my car. I cannot, you know, I cannot recall how many times I got trapped in my car because some person parked too close to my driver's door and had to climb over my gear stick, out from behind the wheel, across the seat, into the back seat to get out all this kind of silly stuff because other people had parked too close to me. And I thought, well, the only way I'm going to get around this is just to park like an idiot and take up two spaces. And sure, people are going to call me names when I'm not there. But short of putting a great big sign on my door saying I'm pregnant, leave me room, which maybe I should have done. That was what I did. And I kind of enjoyed being a bad parker for a while because normally I take pride in my good parking abilities. And then number 16 is getting all that amazing love, support and cuddles from the daddy. Of course, you get all that stuff anyway, but there's even more, aren't there, when you've got a nice little bump and a baby growing inside you. So that was amazing. And just appreciating all that love that was coming. And of course, baby appreciates all that love too, you know. Make sure you include baby and all that love and stuff. And baby doesn't just become a baby when babies come out of your tummy. They're a baby from the minute they're there. So to treat them like that is really, really brilliant. And then also, number 17, is all the daily kisses and cuddles that my little girl would give baby bump as well. She'd come up every morning and give my bump and say good morning and give it a cuddle. And it was just so adorable. Just amazing and then the realization that there was another gorgeous little thing just like that on its way was just that was a lovely thought so appreciating my bump in that way number 18 for me was saving a fortune on wine going out taxis clothes ridiculous shoes all those things that i just basically stopped wearing so i think i went a whole year without buying any new decent clothes it was all that sort of maternity stuff that's just horrific generally and so I probably saved a small fortune in all that stuff, probably spent it all on the baby stuff that came afterwards. But, you know, at least I kind of saved a bit of bit of cash in that area. Number 19 was being able to stay in bed all day and not be called lazy despite feeling it. Now, my second pregnancy was utterly exhausting and I soon realised that I just had to honour my body and just put it first. And if it needed sleep, it needed rest, that's what I had to do. So I literally, there were days where I'd get up, have breakfast, go back to bed, have lunch, go back to bed, get up for dinner and go back to bed. And that was a lot of my weekends in my second pregnancy. And I had to honour that and be okay with that. So I wasn't lazy. I was cooking up a baby. I was, you know, making a human being. That's what I was doing, not lazy. So, and I, it was good feeling and acknowledging that feeling, you know. Number 20 was having the perfect excuse not to exercise or go to the gym. Now, a lot of my pregnant friends at the time would show me up massively in this by sharing amazing pictures of them on Instagram at the gym, working out with big pregnant bodies and amazing. But I just didn't have that level of energy. Like I said, I was tired and I needed to honour that. So being so exhausted that I could barely make it downstairs was obviously I wasn't going to make it to the gym. So that was good for me. And I, I was just OK with that. Um, number 21, spending my maternity leave practising for next year's Great British Bake Off. So here in the UK, we've got a brilliant reality cooking programme all about baking. And I must have cooked a fair few of cakes during my maternity leave and practised all the decoration stuff. You just don't get the time to do that kind of stuff when you're busy with work and life. But maternity leave, I had a little bit of extra time and I just had to take things easy. So yeah, I just went crazy baking and I was able to eat all the fruits of my efforts as well without feeling too guilty. So that was another side benefit because now when I bake stuff, I tend to have one piece and then just try and give the rest away, which is not quite the same. And number 22, appreciating other women who tell you how fabulous and glowing you look, despite the fact that you feel like a massive beach whale, or at least I did. And for the record, guys, like one thing I noticed is that guys always tend to like they tell you how big you're looking. They go, oh, you're looking big. And it's like, no, 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 big's wrong word, wrong word. Fabulous and glowing. 
they're great words. Big's not a good word. So any guys listening, just bear that in mind. Fabulous and glowing are the perfect words to use. Uh, Number 23, relish the challenge of finding yet another thing to say when somebody asks you, how's the pregnancy going? You know, so that really got my creativity going because there's not that much you can say. And yet that's the one question that you get time and time again. If it's not that when it's when's the due date, when's it due? How, you know, so it's always the same old question I was getting and that would drive me insane. So instead of kind of, you know, getting annoyed at that question, I'd start coming up with really interesting, weird things to say that would kind of surprise people. And, and I've made a little game out of it for myself. So that would that would stop me from getting so annoyed. Um, number 24, enjoying that never endingness that pregnancy can make you feel because that was kind of good for me because it felt like it was never ending and I certainly wasn't rushing to start thinking about names for this little thing that was growing inside me. So for my second, my other half and I, we didn't know what whether we were having a little girl or a little boy and we really had to start thinking of some names but we really didn't and I think even after she was born we still didn't have an, a list of names. She only got a name when she was like eight days old or something like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's sort of being okay with the, acknowledging that never endedness of my pregnancy. So number 25, being able to sleep. And then actually I did cross this out actually because, well, to be honest, I didn't sleep. Even though, you know, when you're on leave, you can think, oh, you're sleeping, you can go back to bed in the day, but it's not really sleep. And I don't think I slept well for a good six months in my pregnancy. And, you know, some people go, oh, well, it's training, isn't it? It's like, no, it's not training. It's not training at all. Um, Yeah. So I, but I did try and make myself feel better by the idea that I could go back to bed in the day but certainly it wasn't the kind of sleep that I really felt I needed. Number 26, having an excuse for being a total and utter muppet and not thinking straight and even though it didn't really make it any easier because I hate thinking of myself as a complete muppet um, but at least when you do have muppet moments you've got a get out clause and you can blame it on pregnancy brain. But I didn't, you know, I didn't like, I don't like not being able to sort of think straight. And, but at least, you know, having an excuse sometimes was quite nice. So appreciating that I had an excuse that I could use was great. Um, Number 27, getting away with taking up so much room in bed. I mean, you've got the perfect excuse, haven't you, when you're, when you're big. So you've got to lie on your side and the bump's so big and your legs need to be splayed out because la 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 la, you need the pregnancy pillow needs a bit of room and all these other cushions and you know yeah here you go you need to take up the whole room but at least you've got an excuse right so that was that was my number 27 number 28 here in the UK you get free dental care when you're pregnant so that is a that's a great reason isn't it and I can't believe that's so low down my list but there you go um number 29 having an excuse for food stains down my front because I was so far from the plate <laughs> I would always get that you know, my clothes would just get really bad. Food stains, and it's so embarrassing. I had to take, you know, change of tops sometimes to work. Really, really awful. But at least I had an excuse for it, hey? And then number 30, I think this is my favourite reason in the whole lot. And I don't know why it's only at number 30. This should have been number one. But feel sexy from having a cleavage. Now, that for me was amazing because I'm not one for having a cleavage in normal non-pregnancy time. So to have this gorgeous cleavage for so long was just utterly fabulous and I loved it and it really made me love my body and I really appreciated even though I felt big compared to what I normally was this cleavage just made it all okay and I know it's terrible but you know hey so what cleavages are brilliant aren't they so those are my 30 reasons that I had that helped me to think a whole lot more positively about my pregnancy so maybe some of those are going to work for you Maybe none of them are going to work for you, but hopefully some of them do and can help you to think a little bit more positively about your pregnancy. If you're struggling and you might be generally quite a positive person, but there's always going to be a day that things are just not feeling brilliant. So if you're having one of those days, then, you know, look at your list, read some of the items on it, come up with some new ones, force yourself to think about it. And that could be what it takes to shift your thinking change your perspective and just make you feel a lot better about what you're experiencing and where you're at. And it's really important to acknowledge how you're feeling when you're pregnant. It's not about sort of suppressing those feelings and ignoring them and pretending that they go away. You've got to honour them, face up to them, deal with them, but then just try and turn direction a little bit, shift it a little bit, look at it from another perspective. And sometimes that's all that's required to help you to think a little bit more positively about where you're at. So I hope that today's was useful um, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. (music) 
Thank you for tuning in. You've just been listening to Alexia Leachman from the Fear Free Childbirth Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, she'd really love it if you left a review on iTunes or Stitcher or shared it with a friend. And don't forget, to get a free chapter from her book, head over to fearfreechildbirth.com to get your copy, as well as finding other episodes in this podcast and more about how Alexia can help you with pregnancy and birth preparation coaching. Until next time.